Welcome to this uh, seventh lecture. Um, so, let me uh, recall what uh, briefly I said towards the end of the last lecture. I was trying to tell you that uh, trying to study uh, a general Riemann surface uh, is greatly uh, facilitated by the use of covering spaces. So, uh, let me again recall it, recall the definition. Uh, so, definition. Uh, here map p from x tilde to x uh, uh, where x tilde x are um, connected arcwise arcwise connected locally arcwise connected connected so let me put this <coughs> in brackets so these are certain technical conditions um, i'll explain them uh, is called is called uh, a covering map if so let me list the conditions number 1 p is continuous and subjective number 2 um, every point x belongs to x uh, is contained in an admissible neighborhood <coughs> u. So, what is this admissible neighborhood u namely such that <coughs> p inverse of u is disjoint union of certain v alphas alpha running uh, through an indexing set i p alpha in x tilde open so the inverse image of this of course is a continuous map so the inverse image of an open set uh, uh, containing x will of course be an open set but that's not uh, that's not enough what we want is that should break up into a disjoint union of open sets Okay, uh, such that uh, p restricted to each v alpha from v alpha to u is a homeomorphism. Okay, and uh, in fact. Uh, 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 I should also uh, talk about I should also say that there is a <coughs> there is a need for uh, a basic assumption in in all my talks that all the topological spaces I am going to consider are going to be housed off okay. So, to be very strict I am certainly not going to work with uh, non housed off topological spaces. So, I am not going to say that very often. So, whenever I say topological space of course, I mean uh, housed off topological space okay. So, you know what that means from uh, basic topology it means that uh, a pair of distinct points can be separated by disjoint open neighborhoods okay so that is the host offness condition right so uh, so of course x x tilde and x are uh, housed off and they are connected they are arcwise connected and locally arcwise connected so let me explain these terms so connected is of course again uh, the condition that uh, the space cannot be written as a disjoint union of open subsets okay uh, trying if you are able to write a space as a disjoint union of open subsets uh, you are basically disconnecting it okay and that this should not happen is a definition of connectedness 
and arc wise connected arc wise connectedness is uh, otherwise also called path wise connectedness and uh, this is the condition that any two points on the space can be joined by an arc or a path and by an arc or a path we mean a continuous image of an interval of a closed interval on the real line okay. So if any two points of your space can be connected by a path uh, in a continuous manner and you get that as the image of uh, an interval under a continuous map. Uh, then uh, you say that the space is uh, arc wise connected and the space that is locally arc wise connected is a space for which every neighbourhood of every point contains an arc wise connected neighbourhood. So these are all conditions that uh, are required in the theory uh, the proper theory of covering spaces and of course uh, at, the, at the back of it all spaces we are dealing with are host of spaces so I am not going to write that down. Now uh, so this, uh, this uh, definition of uh, uh, covering space is very very important and it is the key to understanding uh, the geometry uh, and the analysis on an arbitrary Riemann surface. So, uh, so let me say a few things uh, first of all uh, the, um, the space x tilde is called uh, the, the covering space okay and uh, the map P is called a covering map alright. So let me let write, write, write that here. X tilde is called uh, the covering space, um, and uh, of course, as I've already said, there uh, P is a covering map. So I, let me not write that again. Now. Uh, you remember why we got into this uh, situation we got in this situation because yesterday as I was telling you there was uh, uh, this situation where uh, we had on the one hand uh, uh, the cylinder uh, which is uh, if you want uh, uh, S1 <coughs> the unit circle cross R this is the cylinder the infinite cylinder and then uh, which was which was homeomorphic to uh, C star okay which is uh, uh, C minus the origin complex the punctured complex plane the punctured plane as we call it and this is also homeomorphic to delta star which is the unit disc the punctured unit disc the unit disc minus the origin and it is also home homeomorphic to uh, any annulus of this form and uh, uh, this is of course uh, all those complex numbers uh, uh, which with modulus less than 1 and greater than r where r is of course uh, r is a uh, r is a real number with 0 less than small r less than 1 okay. So all these spaces are all homeomorphic they, they are all homeomorphic so let me write, write, let me write that but uh, I, I was explaining a theorem yesterday which said that you know uh, actually you can get uh, different Riemann surface structures on the same if you call all these spaces uh, just as one space uh, up to homeomorphism then all of them uh, give you different uh, Riemann surface structures namely uh, C star is a Riemann surface structure which, uh, which is the natural Riemann surface structure that you get as, a, as an open subset of the complex plane similarly delta star also that is also an open subset for the complex plane and also for delta r okay and I told you that uh, uh, of course uh, the, these are all distinct uh, Riemann surface structures and of course on the cylinder there, there is a Riemann surface structure that corresponds to uh, 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 any, uh, any complex number omega which is uh, uh, non-zero complex number uh, so I should say. okay so <coughs> this is essentially you go modulo uh, you take the complex plane and then you go modulo the uh, the group of translations by integer multiples of uh, this number non zero number omega and then you get the cylinder topologically but uh, the point is that you actually have a quotient map c to c omega which is just c modulo the group 
generated the group of translations by uh, uh, integer multiples of omega okay and I told you that you can turn this uh, this is turned into a Riemann surface in such a way so that this map pi omega is uh, is is uh, holomorphic okay. So you get a Riemann surface structure here and the point is that uh, uh, if you if you vary omega okay this Riemann surface structure seems to depend on omega but if you vary omega it is not going to really depend in, in, in other words for different omegas you are going to get Riemann surface structures which are all isomorphic and there by isomorphism I mean by holomorphic isomorphisms it's holomorphic isomorphisms okay and uh, and of course uh, uh, the these and all these Riemann surface structures are all different. So uh, the, the Riemann surface structure see uh, uh, here uh, and the Riemann surface structure here uh, and, the, and the Riemann surface structure there they are all uh, Riemann surface structures that are inherited just because these uh, these these spaces are open subsets of the complex plane. So they are naturally inherited from the complex plane but yet the Riemann surface structures are different they are not biholomorphic to each other. So I was uh, trying to explain to you that from you know um, from uh, uh, for example uh, C star to delta star or C star to delta R uh, uh, it is not possible to have a holomorphic map uh, because of essentially because uh, of uh, Riemann singularity theorem, uh, removal singularity theorem and Liouville's theorem. So um, and it takes a little bit of work to show that uh, if R1 is not equal to R2 uh, where R1 and R2 are real numbers uh, fractions uh, lying between 0 1 then these delta R1 and delta R2 are not the same. So where of course um, let me again write this this is set of all Z in C such that uh, R is less than mod Z less than 1. And mind you, you take any annulus uh, in general. If you take any open annulus, the inner radius is let's say R1, the outer radius is let's say R2. Then you can scale, you can divide by the outer radius and bring it to an annulus of this form. So actually, this covers uh, all possible, uh, you know, annuli up to holomorphic isomorphism. And the fact is that these are distinct. The fact that the, that these are all distinct is uh, the amazing thing. So the point is how do you distinguish between all these Riemann surface structures. So I told you that somehow uh, 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 the fact that you know you do not have a map from C star to delta star or C star to delta R okay uh, which would extend to a map uh, from C okay. So trying to get a map from C to any of these things uh, does not happen it does not happen for delta star or delta R okay whereas it happens here. Okay, so uh, and what is the moral story? The moral story is that once you have a map like this, uh, this map has the properties of a covering map, and you get this Riemann surface structure as a quotient of C by a certain uh, subgroup of automorphisms, and these are Mobius transformations. And I told you that uh, uh, the amazing thing is that this is what is true in general. Okay, so uh, so let me write that down. Uh, but before that, let me uh, let me give you two examples. So. The, the the first one is um, uh, say um, yeah of course this is one example the other the other example is uh, uh, so let me write them down examples are uh, number one c to c omega which is uh, c mod z times translation by omega and this is the this is the way you get a holomorphic uh, structure Riemann surface structure on the cylinder the other one is of course uh, you get Riemann surface structure on the torus. Uh, so the other map is C to uh, T uh, sub omega 1 comma omega 2 and I will write it this is pi sub omega 1 comma omega 2 and uh, what is this this is a this is a complex plane modulo the group of translations by omega 1 and uh, uh, or let me just put cross group of translations by uh, omega 2 where of course the condition is that uh, uh, let me write it here uh, omega 1 omega 2 not equal to 0 and omega 1 by omega 2 is not a real number. 
So, of course, these conditions are there, okay. Uh, this is how you get a holomorphic structure on a torus, okay. And uh, uh, it seems to so here you see it seems to depend on uh, two complex parameters, okay. But then I told you if you take the set of isomorphism classes of such structures, uh, that set is uh, uh, bijective to complex numbers, okay. And in fact, it is a, it becomes naturally a Riemann surface, and the Riemann surface structure is just the complex plane, okay. So that means for each complex uh, number, I can give you a, a distinct holomorphic structure on the torus, a Riemann surface structure on the torus, and conversely. Uh, but the key to all these theorems is uh, the notion of a covering space. So uh, these are two examples of covering spaces. Okay, and so let me. Um, um, so uh, covering spaces. So let me write that here. Covering space T helps uh, helps. <coughs> Distinguish uh, between, uh, or let me say, classify uh, Riemann surface structures. Okay, so, uh, so, uh, what is it that uh, uh, that really happens? So, what really happens is. Um, um, a series of things. Uh, uh, suppose you have, uh, suppose um, X uh, is a Riemann surface. Okay. Suppose I take a Riemann surface X. Okay. Uh, then, uh, uh, then uh, the underlying topological space. So I'm writing, I'm abbreviating topological space like this. Then the underlying topological space is uh, uh, is of course a host of, uh, and I'll put all these conditions connected, uh, connected um, aqueous connected. Locally or quasi connected and let me add one more uh, line locally simply connected. Okay. So, um, of course, uh, I forgot to tell you. That arcwise connected. If a topological space is arcwise connected, then it is connected. And uh, the reason, uh, the but it's not true the other way. There is something called the topology sine curve, which is connected but not arcwise connected. So uh, when I say arcwise connected, I don't have to say connected, okay? But nevertheless, I'm including it, right? And uh, the reason why it is connected, if it is arcwise connected, is because uh, uh, suppose you have an arcwise connected space and if it is not connected then a disconnection of the space will break into two pieces. So you take a point in this piece, you take a point in the other piece and of course because it is arcwise connected I can join it by an arc. But because you have broken the uh, space into two pieces, this arc will also break into two pieces and since the arc is the image of a closed interval, uh, it will essentially break the interval into two pieces okay? and uh, you cannot break uh, the, uh, the since the interval is connected you cannot do that. Okay, so that is the proof, essentially. So um, then the other condition that I have put here is locally simply connected. So this is the condition that uh, every point has a, an open neighborhood which is simply connected. And the, by simply connected, the, uh, I mean that any uh, uh, loop in that space can be continuously shrunk to a point. And you can think of a loop as a, an arc with the initial point the same as the final point. Okay, so so I put all these conditions, and why do I need all these conditions? Uh, there is a theorem which says that whenever a topological space has all these conditions, then you can construct a 
uh, a covering uh, for that space that is you can get a covering map like this for that space such that the thing on top the covering space on top is itself simply connected okay. So, let me write that then it can be shown that we can uh, get a covering a covering p from x tilde to x with x tilde simply connected ok. The space above uh, so, it will be a covering map with the extra condition that the space above is simply connected which means that you know uh, it has a property that any loop in that space uh, that is any arc in that space or path in that space which has the initial point equal to the final point can be com continuously shrunk to a single point. I mean this is essentially the condition that there are no holes. So, for example, you know if I took an annulus and I took a, uh, a loop that is going around the annulus. I cannot shrink it to a point because there is a hole in between ok. So, in that sense uh, uh, trying to shrink a loop into a point is just trying to check whether there are any holes ok. Um, so, <coughs> that is the uh, situation here for x tilde uh, uh, for this uh, x tilde and then uh, uh, among all the covering spaces of a topological space if you look at those coverings for which the covering space is simply connected uh, uh, that space turns out to be special namely it is uniquely determined up to a unique isomorphism ok. So, so let me write that also such such a covering space space is called a universal covering space. space for x ok. So, universal covering space for x and <coughs> and is uh, uniquely determined up to isomorphism. So, there is uh, 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 something special about this covering space uh, if it is uh, simply connected ok. Now, uh, why does this help? So, if you um, uh, uh, first look at simply any covering space of a, sp of a space like this and suppose this space was a Riemann surface then uh, after all you see this covering map is a local homeomorphism that means a local homeomorphism means for every point above I can find a neighborhood such that the image of that neighborhood below is an open set and the map restricted to that neighborhood is a homeomorphism that comes because of this condition. So, a, uh, a map like this is certainly a lo local homeomorphism and uh, what is the advantage of uh, x being a Riemann surface ok. If x was also a Riemann surface then uh, x has charts locally ok and because uh, x tilde is locally homeomorphic to x I can transport the charts I can define charts on x tilde and in this way I can make see x tilde into a Riemann surface ok. So, the moral of the story is if you have a covering space for a Riemann surface then the covering space the, the, then the covering space itself becomes a Riemann surface and that Riemann surface structure is also uh, uniquely determined up to an isomorphism. So, let me so let me write that statement here uh, the the covering space or let me say any covering space. not necessarily 
the universal covering you take any covering space any covering space of a Riemann surface also inherits a Riemann surface structure uh, defined uh, uh, uniquely defined uniquely up to a uh, unique isomorphism uh, such that such that the covering map map becomes holomorphic so you must uh, really understand the what is happening see if you took the condition of a cylinder namely this one or uh, that of a torus what actually happened was uh, we these both are both of these are covering spaces but to begin with there was no uh, there was no Riemann surface structure here or here okay we were trying to put the rim uh, this is the Riemann surface structure that we got because of the covering okay and here again the reason was that because this is a local homeomorphism you are able to uh, get charts in this direction right and that is how this becomes a Riemann surface and once this becomes a Riemann surface this projection becomes holomorphic similarly that is also the case in the case of that is also the, uh, the case here for a torus okay so here what is happening is you have a covering space situation but the top is a Riemann surface and what is below the the bottom is a quotient of the uh, top by a certain group of automorphisms in this case these are Mobius transformations they are automorphisms of C okay. So the moral of the story is that this whole argument is being turned around here instead of uh, uh, so here I am obtaining a Riemann surface um, as the base space the space below of a covering okay and uh, rather I would say I have a topological space which is the base space of a covering and the top space is already a Riemann surface in this case the top space is C so I am getting a Riemann surface structure on the base space and what is happening here is exactly the reverse if I start with a Riemann surface any Riemann surface then you take any covering space of the Riemann surface then the covering space the top space that inherits a Riemann surface structure and this map becomes holomorphic so it is just the uh, so what you can see is that this notion of Riemann surface uh, can be if it is if it is there on the top it, it can be pushed to the bottom if it is there at the bottom you can push it pull it up to the top so that is the that is the uh, the importance of this method okay so so uh, now I so here I have said that uh, any covering space of a Riemann surface also inherits a Riemann surface structure such that the covering map becomes holomorphic so in particular uh, if I take the universal covering space for this Riemann surface then the universal covering space will also become a Riemann surface okay but now what is the point the point is that the universal covering space is simply connected so what you have on top now is a simply connected Riemann surface but now there is a fundamental theorem of uniformization which says any simply connected Riemann surface has to be either the complex plane or the open uh, the, the unit disc which is the same as upper half plane or uh, the Riemann sphere okay so this tells you that any Riemann surface is obtained from these three simple Riemann surface surfaces namely simply connected Riemann surfaces just by going modulo a certain group of automorphisms which are going to be Mobius transformations so that is the importance of this okay so let me write that down so in particular uh, the the covering space of uh, the universal covering space uh, of of a Riemann surface also becomes a Riemann surface and has to be to be uh, one of C or delta. Uh, 
or uh, uh, P 1 the Riemann sphere uh, up to isomorphism. By, by the, the, the uniformization theorem for simply connected Riemann surfaces. Um, that is one point. And um, again, let me stress on another point that I have uh, that I was explaining in the last lecture. I was trying to tell you uh, where the uh, the fundamental group fits into the picture. So I told you that in this case, if you take the cylinder, the fundamental group of the cylinder is Z, okay. Uh, and uh, I'll define fundamental group a little bit more formally uh, very soon, but uh, or uh, um, if not now, in probably in the next lecture. Um, but uh, the fundamental group of the cylinder is Z. Okay, notice that that is the group. Uh, that group, as a set, is exactly the fiber over any point. That the inverse image of any point is a is uh, is bijective to Z. Okay, and the fundamental group Z is also the same as the group of uh, translations. Going modulo which you got the Riemann surface below. Okay. All right. So uh, I can I can write this as uh, I can write this as C modulo fundamental group of C the C omega, where the fundamental group of C omega is just Z. Okay, and Z is isomorphic to Z dot T omega. Okay, and look at this situation. In this situation also you take any point here the inverse image of that point will be a grid of points okay and this grid is just a translate of the vertices of the parallelograms the, the fundamental translates of the fundamental parallelogram okay that is formed by omega 1 and omega 2 as two coterminous edges and what is that grid that grid is just a copy of z cross z okay after all they are integer translates of a pair of vectors okay so the inverse image of a point under this map is also a cop a set theoretically a copy of z cross z okay and that z cross z is also the fundamental group of the torus okay the fundamental group of the, of the torus is z cross z so i can write this as c uh, to c modulo the fundamental group of the torus okay so what is happening uh, here is valid in general if you take a universal covering space what will happen the fiber is that the fiber over any point that is the inverse image of any point will be bijective with the fundamental group of the base okay and the top space uh, will have a subgroup of automorphisms isomorphic to this fundamental group of the base and going modulo that at the top space going mod uh, going modulo that subgroup of automorphisms is what gives you the space below and the covering map is just the quotient map so this is what happens in general so let me write that down he here uh, in the case of a universal covering p from x tilde to x uh, the the fibers of p inverse x uh, are bijective to pi one of x. So here I'm using pi sub one. Uh, this pi sub one is the fundamental group. Maybe I'll uh, I'll write the pi a little bit more carefully so that you don't. So I'll put it like this. <coughs> the the fibers are all the fiber over every point is uh, a set which is bijective to the fundamental group. Okay. 
So, let me write th those conditions that is the first condition then, sec then, the, then the second uh, 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 not a condition it is rather a consequence. The second thing is that the fundamental group of x is a subgroup of automorphisms of the space above pi of x can be pi 1 of x. So, it is pi 1 pi sub 1 please correct that pi sub 1 for the first fundamental group and normally when we uh, talk about fundamental group we always talk about first fundamental group. So, we never say first we do not add the adjective first. So, when we just say fundamental group it means first fundamental group okay. Uh, the, the first fundamental group of the base space can be identified with a subgroup of automorphisms of the top space of the covering space. All right. So, what do I mean by automorphisms? Uh, if 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 the situation is that uh, x was just a topological space for which you have this covering, uh, then uh, by automorphisms of x tilde, I mean uh, homeomorphisms of x tilde onto itself. Okay, and of course you know uh, the that forms a group under composition, and I'm saying that you can realize uh, the fundamental group as a subgroup of that. Uh, group of automorphisms of the big the space above okay and uh, and uh, x is precisely the quotient so let me write that let me continue here of x tilde by by this subgroup okay and uh, uh, this also happens if you are in a Riemann surface situation. If x were a Riemann surface then I told you that uh, x tilde uh, automatically inherits a Riemann surface structure such that the map P becomes holomorphic then again what happens is that every fiber the inverse image of any point is always going to be bijective to the fundamental group below number 1 number 2 the fundamental group below of the of the space below uh, can be uh, identified with the subgroup of automorphism of x tilde but now automorphism of x tilde as a riemann surface not just homeomorphisms because x tilde has now the additional structure of a riemann surface by automorphisms i mean self by holomorphic maps okay so uh, here it will be automorphisms as Riemann surface and again x is precisely the quotient of x tilde by the subgroup okay. Now if you put together all these things uh, uh, the moral of the story is any Riemann surface is just uh, a quotient of the complex plane or the unit disc which is the same as upper half plane or the Riemann sphere modulo the fundamental group of the Riemann surface by a universal covering okay. So, that means that to study any Riemann surface I need to only study the subgroup the subgroups of uh, uh, automorphisms of the complex plane or uh, the unit disc or upper half plane or P1 which which all turn out to be uh, as you know Mobius transformations okay. So, essentially uh, this reduces to a large extent the study of Mobius transformations okay. And now uh, what I am going to do next is uh, try to tell you um, what kind of uh, uh, classification preliminary classification you can do for Riemann surfaces uh, that you can obtain by this method okay. So, so, so let me write that um, just let me look at it for a moment. So, thus any Riemann surface is the quotient of C or U or uh, C or delta let me use delta or P1 by a subgroup of uh, uh, Mobius transformations. A 
subgroup of Mobius transformations, uh, isomorphic to the fundamental group of the given Riemann surface. So this is uh, this statement uh, is called the uh, the general uniformization theorem. Okay. So it's called uniformization uh, because you're you're getting everything as a quotient of one of these three basic Riemann surfaces. Okay. And uh, um, uh, in th in this uh, regard, let me uh, uh, note that you know the uh, uh, automorphisms uh, holomorphic automorphisms of uh, p1 uh, p1c this is the uh, this is the uh, riemann sphere these are going to be all uh, mobius transformations and they are uh, uh, given by the group psl uh, 2 comma c okay uh, and uh, then uh, uh, automorphisms <coughs> holomorphic automorphisms of the upper half plane okay uh, is going to be isomorphic to uh, so let me write this down first and then I will explain um, automorphic holomorphisms of C is going to be PSP delta 2 comma C. So, um, so, um, so this is upper triangular upper triangular uh, elements of uh, PSL two C. So let's let me explain this uh, uh, this notation for a for, uh, for those uh, who may not be familiar with it. So you know uh, a general Mobius transformation is of the form A z plus B by C C z plus T. Okay, now you can associate. Of course, the condition is A D minus uh, uh, B C is zero. Uh, by that, of course, I mean the, the map is exactly Z going to A z plus B on the numerator divided by C z plus D on the denominator, where A B C D are complex numbers. A D minus B C not equal to zero. Now to that Mobius transformation, you associate. Uh, yep the matrix a b c d okay now if you associate it by this matrix this association does not give you a unique matrix because you know instead of a b c d if I put lambda a lambda b lambda c lambda d where lambda is any non-zero number then the resulting Mobius transformation is still the same because it will be lambda a uh, you know z plus lambda b divided by lambda c z plus lambda d and the lambda will just cancel out. So the moral of the story is that you can uh, go modulo scalars okay you can go modulo scalars and uh, the one way of doing it is by uh, uh, assuming that the determinant is 1 okay. So if you assume determinant is 1 then you can identify the Mobius transformations with the special linear group okay these are all matrices the determinant 1 SL 2 C okay and even then you do not get a unique representative because uh, you know for uh, if I take z going to a z plus b by c z plus d with a d minus b c equal to 1 which is the condition for SL to c then I have also the representative minus a minus b minus c minus d because that is also going to give me a z plus b by c z plus d and the determinant is still 1. So I still have 2 choices that means you know uh, I have to still go modulo the subgroup given by plus or minus the identity matrix and it is that quotient which is written as PSL. So PSL is SL modulo the subgroup plus or minus identity map. Plus or minus identity map is a uh, is a finite subgroup just with two elements. Okay. And going modulo that is what you get is what gives you PSL to see. Okay. And you can check that the uh, I've written upper half plane because that's holomorphic to the unit disk because a Mobius transformation you can you can always find you can map any uh, uh, disk open disk to any half plane you know. So uh, it is uh, in the context of uh, uniformization one 
always tries to work with uh, the upper half plane and the automorphism of the upper half plane it will be PSL 2 R. So, here you are only looking at uh, real coefficients you are looking at real coefficients and the, and the reason why you get real coefficients is because you see if you have Mobius transformation that has to map the upper half plane to the upper half plane by continuity it has to map the boundary to the boundary. So, it has to be a map which has to fix R because the boundary is the real line for the upper half plane in the complex plane okay the real axis. So, if it has to fix the real axis that is the condition that makes the coefficients uh, forces the coefficients to be real okay. So, that is how you get this as a subgroup of this and uh, you can check that um, if you want uh, automorphisms of uh, uh, of the complex plane uh, that means you know the point at infinity has to go back to the point at infinity right and that condition will tell you that uh, the subgroup of this which will do that will be upper triangular uh, elements of PSL okay. So, uh, the moral of the story is that you have to study certain subgroups of these groups which occur uh, which 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 have the possibility of occurring as the fundamental group of a ray, uh, of the topological space underlying a Riemann surface and then that Riemann surface is gotten by uh, going modulo that subgroup from the covering space which comes uh, if you are going to look at this the covering space is C this corresponds to the covering space delta or u and this corresponds to the universal covering space P 1 okay. So, the uh, uh, no, so so this corresponds to C, this corresponds to delta, and of course this corresponds to P1. Okay, uh, so the moral of the story is that you are look, you have to study certain uh, Mobius transformations, properties of Mobius transformations. Okay, and it happens that uh, uh, once you do that, uh, just assuming this basic uniformization theorem for simply connected surfaces, you can get a lot of uh, information about classification. Uh, so, that is what I will try to do and of course, I should tell you that uh, trying to prove the basic uniformization theorem uh, is uh, will involve further techniques that will for example, involve techniques from analysis okay. and we will we'll do that later in one of the later courses I mean in one of the later lectures okay. So, I will stop here. Thank you.